welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing another one of those incoherent book babble things about a book that I've recently finished reading. That book is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. This is a book that I've wanted to read for a really, really long time. My deep desire to read this um, came from when I was younger and I watched the movie version of it. Um, it was a movie adaption by ITV. ITV did the movie adaption. And I watched this movie and it was kind of like weirdly wonderful and magical. And then I found out it was a book. And in my attempt to get the book, um, I didn't actually order the book myself, but in my attempt to get hold of the book, I was given this, which is the graphic novel version of the film of the book. So the artwork in here is very, very similar to the um, artwork of the film. So I don't know if you can really see that, the unicorn on the cover there. We've got the red bull and the unicorns in Haggard Town, Princess, Molly and the men that she was with, the old story that um, Schmandrick told of the wizard that turned a unicorn into a man. It's a really beautifully illustrated um, graphic novel and after watching the film, reading the graphic novel, the only thing that there was left for me to do was to read the original novel. So, I've now done that and it was as magical and wonderful as I would have ever hoped for it to be. I feel like I did this all in the wrong order. You know, I started with the film, then read the graphic novel, then read the original novel. Whereas I completely should have read the novel, then the graphic novel, then watched the film. But I watched this when I was really, really young. This is essentially, the title tells you all you really need to know about the book. It is the story of the last unicorn and essentially her quest to find the other unicorns. She's she hears a rumour that she is the last one when some hunters come into her woods um, and obviously they can't kill anything because if a unicorn lives in a forest the forest lives forever everything in it lives and cannot be harmed or whatever so they go into her forest and they know that something's not right and they're like oh it's the forest of the last unicorn and then the elder hunter beckons out and says like you are the last of your kind do not leave your forest etc etc upon hearing this the unicorn obviously as any protagonist does in any book thinks oh i've been told that it's dangerous for me to leave this forest i'm gonna leave this forest <laughs> so that's what she does to go on a quest to find the other unicorns um she meets a butterfly here's the one that gives her the basic information she needs to go on her quest. He is the one that tells her the unicorns have all gone long ago, the Red Bull drove them down the road and covered their footsteps, blah 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 blah. So she then has that knowledge of there's a Red Bull and this Red Bull is what took all of the other unicorns. So she knows that her quest isn't necessarily going to be an easy one. As she goes on she is captured and she meets a magician called Schmendrick and he is a brilliant character. He's hilarious and the companionship that he and the unicorn have is strange. It's nice but it's strange um, and that strangeness is only then amplified when they also meet Molly Grew who goes on their journey with them as well because the companionship between Molly and the unicorn, as Molly is a female, is very different. Um, men are not supposed to be able to see unicorns, but as Schmendrick is a magician, he can see her. And their whole 
relationship is a bit strange but he wants what's best for her as well as having his own motives as well because he is kind of under a curse himself sort of a bit <laughs> so yeah you've got unicorn schmendrick and molly and they are all now on the quest to find the red bull and then they meet king haggard and prince lear and the red bull eventually really it is just a magical story um any story about a unicorn is going to be a magical story is it not and i feel there's some like life lessons in there as well because the whole point of a unicorn being a unicorn within this book anyway is that she has emotions but not very many a unicorn's sole purpose is to keep themselves beautiful and protect their forest they don't their meaning doesn't really go much further than that they are at some point i think described as like the vainest of creatures they consider themselves the most beautiful thing and they would spend hours looking at their own reflection in ponds or puddles or anything they could look at their reflection in they would so the unicorn as she's spending so much time with these humans starts to learn more about emotion and then something drastic happens and i'm not going to say what happens because if you do want to read this book and you haven't that would spoil it so i'm not going to do that for you but yeah something happens and the unicorn learns some things schmendrick learns some things prince lear learns some things and everyone goes on a very strange development but in a positive way no one changes negatively which is all good this book is actually a really quite an old book it was written in 1968 so i'm clearly a little bit behind in the reading of this not that i was around in 1968 that was a long time ago but you don't really get that in the book it doesn't come across as older literature because it's so fantastic there's such this magical fantasy air to it that without reading in the beginning about it being written in 1968 then you wouldn't really know also if you're curious to know the edition that i have is the 40th anniversary edition which was published in 2008 the quote on the front of the book says the last unicorn is the best book i've ever read you need to read it if you've already read it you need to read it again and that's from patrick rothfuss rothfuss i think that's how you say it rothfuss um author of the name of the wind and the wise man's fear series i don't know what it's called does it have a name i'm sure g will correct me if it has a name that guy thinks that this is the best book he's ever read so if you don't trust my word that it's a really good book trust his it is a really really good book it's a quick read and i think the reason that i wouldn't give it a five star is because i had already seen the movie and read the graphic novel so i kind of in fact i've seen the movie many many times and i've read the graphic novel a couple of times so really i knew the story inside out so there wasn't really much more that the book could give me i was just reading it for my own pleasure of knowing that i've read it in its original form i would give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars for sure and i do think that possibly if i hadn't read the graphic novel and i hadn't seen the movie then it probably would have been a five star because i wouldn't have known what was going to happen but i did have that knowledge already so it didn't give me anything new but nonetheless i completely enjoyed the story and if you haven't read it and you don't know the story then i would definitely recommend reading it i think it is one of those stories that you just have to read it's so magical and it's a fantasy classic and if you haven't read it now you can leave because i'm gonna just basically go over the end bit and feelings towards stuff so if you haven't read it off your scoot and if you have continue okay so towards the end when schmendrick turns the unicorn into the lady amalthea i think that was incredible but terrifying 
because the emotions that Molly had towards that, and we know how Molly felt about the unicorn, it was very confusing and it was very confusing for the unicorn, which I think made it a bit confusing for the reader as well. Because from Schlendrick's point of view, he did just save her life. And if he hadn't turned her into a human, then the Red Bull probably would have driven her into the sea with the rest of the unicorns. So it was a bold thing to do. And the fact that he didn't even really know if he could do it himself. I think that was a big turning point for his character because he knew he had the strength that his mentor had when his mentor turned the other unicorn into a human. But even at that point, he said, his mentor, who was one of the greatest magicians of all time, couldn't turn him back again. So he's not entirely sure if he can turn the Lady Amalfia back into the unicorn, and that leaves us on unsteady ground there. At that point, time seems to then go really, really quickly, because before you know it, they're serving King Haggard in the castle. Prince Lear is head over heels in love with the Lady Amalfia, but the Lady Amalfia has no emotion back for him. She's still confused about how to be human. She knows she's not what she was. And then she starts losing her memory of what she was and what she came for and starts feeling more human. And that's where the unicorn learns emotion. And that's not what unicorns are about. So when she then learns how to feel and she starts returning Prince Lear's feelings, that puts a whole spanner in the works of this finding the unicorns thing. So Molly Grew and Schmendrick at that point kind of have to take things into their own hands. And it works, I suppose. They find out the way down to the Red Bull and they work out where the unicorns are kept. It involves giving some fake wine to a dead skull that tells them all of the secrets, which I think is ridiculous, but it's magic, you know, whatever. Um, and the passageway is through the old clock and then they smash the clock and then they're trapped down in the Red Bull's lair. And in a moment of terror, I suppose, as they're all being confronted by the Red Bull, Schmendrick turns Lady Amalthea back into the unicorn. And with her newfound emotion and strength and her love for Prince Lear, she has the strength and the courage to face the Red Bull and instead of him driving her into the sea she drives him into the ocean and puts him out as he is a big blazing fireball of a bull and when the Red Bull is dead in the sea all of the unicorns work their way out it was really beautiful how they were described when they were trapped in the sea it was like Whenever a wave formed, it was them trying to break out and then the crash of the wave was them being pulled back into the ocean. I think it was really beautiful imagery. But yeah, when the Red Bull is gone, the unicorns all come out and Schmendrick and the unicorn have one last encounter that isn't real. In the um, graphic novel and the film, it was a real encounter, but in the original story it wasn't. It was a dream that could well not have been a dream, but could well have been a dream. I don't know, I think that's probably left down to interpretation. But he has one last encounter with the unicorn who explains how she's changed and she's grateful and she is the only unicorn that knows how to regret and I think it's just beautiful. I'm gonna leave it at that because I think that's all my feelings about this story. I've had a long time to process it because I've known the story for a long time. Um, I just wanted to talk about the book itself and if you weren't aware of it, but it's great. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this little ramble about unicorns. <laughs> Um, if you have, please give it a thumbs up and chat to me down in the comments if you would like to. And if you fancy subscribing, I am always eternally grateful for that. And I will see you next time. Bye!